Hello there, Ray here, and guys, we have a brand new snapshot. This is 22W43A, and this is going to be for 1.20 as well as for 1.19.3. In it, we have a lot of things to look at, including a big change to how PvP is going to be done, and some new insight on how the sniffer mob is going to be implemented. Now, let's get started by making sure you guys are subscribed or leaving a like on the video. There was a lot of feedback on how to organize the creative menu, and they took that and added it into this new snapshot. So like in the nature blocks, you might have heard me complain about how dirt's not at the very top so they went ahead and kind of reorganized it so some of the more useful things are at the top and getting towards the bottom you see we got some more of the items versions and then some of the really weird stuff like infested stones are at the very bottom they also added in some blocks that we never had in the creative menu like the dragon egg which we'd always have to use commands to give ourselves it they also redid the redstone tab adding in a bunch of more little things that can be used for redstone like string is my tripwire now and even things like the drip leaper here if you guys haven't already looked at the creative menu, I'd really recommend it because overall I've been really impressed just in a few days I've been using it and I've been having no problem of finding different things just by thinking about it a little bit rather than having to remember exactly where it would be. There's also some things that were missing from the creative menu like water bottles as well as different types of potions and tip arrows which they added in now. Now in the spawn eggs tab, they also add in the mob spawner, which is another thing we couldn't get without using commands. You might also see that the icons actually change for these tabs. So now we have a netherite sword here. For consumables, we have a golden apple. Kind of illustrate that not only do you got food in this tab here, but also ocean effects. Crafting, they change it from netherite ingot to a iron ingot, just because iron is probably used more in crafting. But there's other things also like for the anvil uses, they have the enchanted books down here. They use a more vibrant spawn egg rather than the shulker one. They got this nice vibrant pig one. I really do like the idea of them sorting the more used items towards the top of the tab because clicking the tabs is pretty fast, but actually scrolling down to the item you want is probably the most time consuming thing. One thing I do complain about is a lot of times I just want to click directly on this scroll bar to where the item is because I kind of know it's like down towards the bottom, but you can't actually just directly click. You have to like click and drag a little bit. So I don't know if this can be something that they can actually fix. The camel's spawn egg got retextured so that it looks more like the colors which are on the camel itself. Overall, I do believe the spawn eggs are a little bit too similar to themselves and sometimes you can get them confused. I feel like they're just more variations of colors that could be used in order to tell them apart. Speaking of camels, they change the way camels actually walk. Because the camels in real life actually move both legs on both sides at the same time. And that's what they added into the game. You can see it kind of has this sliding, gliding effect. Although animals in real life can switch up the way they walk depending on how fast they're moving and what type of terrain they're going over top of. I think it's really cool that they're trying to reenact exactly how the mob moves. But I did find it odd that they didn't implement this right away because, um, yeah, when they design these kind of like models and stuff, they literally just look at videos of camels and look at them in real life. So how they mess this up, not sure. In the background of my review video last time, you might notice that camels had trouble pathfinding on top of the hanging signs which is now as a result. Now because gates were always kind of floating, when we would place hanging signs underneath them, it would look a bit odd. So now when you try to place a hanging sign underneath of a gate, you just can't do it. So if you did this in prior snapshot, it's kind of a discontinue, although there's other ways you could make this same block combination. If you're curious how to do all these cursed signs and stuff, I did do two videos on those, which I'll link below. Now the spacing between the individual rows on the sign were too small when it came to the hanging size. Here you can see how the G is clipping into the E. Despite having the appropriate log types, it wasn't possible to actually craft birch or azalea for the hanging signs. With this new Snapchat data pack, they made it so you could turn on or off new 1.20 features. But there were still ways to smuggle the 1.20 features into like 1.19.3 snapshot. This was using the saved toolbars, which they now stopped. Before, it wasn't possible to actually block TNT explosions with a shield. Same for ender crystal explosions, but this is now fixed along with the ability to block gas fireballs and damage from beds and respawn acres. This will change the game when it comes to PvP because a lot of people have the best gear, so the only way to actually kill them is often using ender crystals. They fix a few different bugs to do with fire, so if the player catches on fire, now when they hop inside of a boat, the water underneath of the boat won't actually put the fire out. But they also made it so that using a water bottle that is splashed and throw onto yourself, you can actually put it out. This also means when mobs that could take fire damage go inside of a boat, they no longer will take damage from the water, even though they're technically touching it. They fixed this funny bug where if you make a mob have a longer death timer, it would die and then just get stuck in this death phase, and you can't get rid of this. And when loading the world back up again, you see the mobs will just go through the death phase once again. 
This reminds me of this video here where I got actually trapped using a similar thing to this. The mobs couldn't be killed and I was placed in a container like this and I couldn't actually click out because the mob was in my way. Now villagers won't lose their discounts when being converted and if you would re-log during that time. With the first 1.20 snapshot, they also accidentally introduced a bug where Alay's pillagers and villagers would lose their inventory when unloaded or reloaded. When upgrading world's points of interest, such as like the different workstations that villagers use, weren't working properly. Little air pockets will no longer be produced when breaking seagrass, as well as drip leaf. The bug that occurred to me several times on stream where it would crash while in spectator mode has now been fixed. They also added in drafts for player reports so that if you accidentally exit out while you're making a report, it will remember it until you leave the server. New network protocols were also implemented for a better experience. We got some other Minecraft news including the sniffer being added and so far 1.20 is looking pretty exciting. With this new update, it means I will be live streaming it, testing all the new things we can do with it. So make sure you follow me over at Twitch and I'll be playing on my testing server. It's open to all my viewers and this is only possible because of Bisect hosting with them. It's possible to have your very own Minecraft server and you can get 25% off if you use my link down in the description or code Ray. This also supports me, so thanks everybody who's been using it. The new skins that they showed at the Minecraft live event have now been introduced so you can add them to your character from the Minecraft launcher. So if I go to skins here, you can see all the different variations of my Ray skin and Gordy skins, but down here you can also see the new ones. So not only do these skins have new textures, but they also got names for each of these characters, just like Alex and Steve. So this one's called Sunny. Looks like he has some bib overalls, maybe a prosthetic arm. And at first I thought this was like a helmet, but I think it's hair. There's also Zuri, which has more of a like well-dressed manner with a tucked in t-shirt and even a belt. And these characters are probably represent of even different locations in the world. Like the name Zuri isn't one that I recognize, but maybe in some places of the world that's normal name. There's also Ari, which might be like a European name with a more like casual wear. There's also Noor, which has a more like Michael Jackson outfit look. There's also McKenna, which has these pastel look clothes. There's also EFE, I don't know if this pronounced Effie, but it looks like she has more like a professional dress, maybe like a school uniform. Then there's K, which it looks like they might be wearing sandals and maybe some type of rope. So very interesting characters. And if you guys recognize where any of these names are, like regionally within the world, let me know down in the comments. In this article, they also make some funny references, like when you would join a server and you see like 30 people with the Steve skin all running all about. So hopefully with this variation, we won't see so many clones. After the Minecraft live event, they had a Ask Me Anything session here on Reddit where you could ask the developers different questions and they would try to answer them. They said they're still looking for feedback on the chisel bookshelf when it comes to its redstone mechanics. People ask if the bookshelves will be pushable in Java Edition. And they said no, they're not going to make them pushable. So for all the people that are looking for like pushable tile entities for Java Edition, it's looking like that's not actually coming in 1.20. People ask why hasn't there been more optimizations and they said that performance is something they're trying to work for. They said more recently they have been able to change their internal org which allow them to address this problem going forward. They also added that in the caves and cliffs update they did do a lot of different performance optimizations. I do get a lot of comments from you guys saying that it's difficult to play the newer versions compared to the older versions just because the performance is so much worse and some computers can't handle it. So maybe if they could give us more options we could turn down like more different types of details and stuff like that so more people could play. There's a question about what are the plans for the parity between Bedrock and Java? And which additions will they put more time into? It said that they're always trying to close the gap between Java and Bedrock edition. They understand it's a delicate process. Their overall goal is to allow it so it doesn't matter what you do in one edition, it should be applicable to the other one. There's a question related to sniffers. Can you actually place plants onto the backs of the sniffer mob? They said there hasn't been any decisions on the actual functionality of this mob yet. When it comes to 1.20, they already said that they're getting feedback from what players have said, so we'll continue to see tweaks throughout the snapshots. So a great way to give them feedback is on Reddit, as well as their feedback website, and the official Minecraft Discord server, which I've been told has reached its max capacity, so it's possible that people can't even join that. There's some more insight on how they're going to release minor versions for the Java edition. They don't commit to any exact number, but they did say that they're coming out with multiple minor versions a year while continue to doing major releases like 1.19, 1.20, once per year. So this is a bit different what they said in years past where they're trying to do two updates per year. Now it sounds like they're going to try to aim for one a year. So if that's so, they most likely will try to release those around May of each year or June when typically people get off of school and go for like summer vacation or summer break. And because they're coming out with minor versions in between those times, it's possible for them to easily fix problematic things like we've seen in the recent snapshot where they're going for a 1.19.3 update while at the same time also coming out with 1.20 features. They also explained why they didn't give the camels the ability to store stuff because it would take away from the features of some mobs already current in the game, like donkeys and llamas. That way old content is still useful. 
Now come join my Twitch live stream where we'll be playing in the new 1.20 snapshot. Or check out this playlist where I'm trying to design an automatic farm for every item in the game Minecraft. Or this one about crazy glitches still in the game. I've been having a lot of fun during our Twitch live streams designing all sorts of kinds of new tricks and farms. I hope you guys are excited for 1.20 as I am and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!